It's a window dressing. Then we're missing each other altogether. Because in every sovereign state, it means that that state has capacity to deal with itself with its own problems. Yes, Zimbabwe has its own problems. It has own economic problems. It has its own commercial problems. It has its own political problems. It has got its historical problems. It has a Gukurahundi problems. It has the Majiki Mashona land problems where Zulus and Mandeveles killed Mashonas. Mashonas went back to revenge on the Mandeveles that were killed. It has issues of uh, its own political rigging, Mugabe issues. It has its own land issues, agriculture. Name it. Tell me a country in the world that does not have its own problems. The question is when a foreign country and an outside country comes into our space and they want to tell us what we to do with our own countries then there is a big problem right there because the same autonomy that you want a country to practice under its sovereign rights then they must practice those rights then what are sovereign rights when international law constantly puts pressure on local communities on how they should manage their own communities now i hear that mdc in zimbabwe has almost moved into the space where it is now asking and uh, requesting the american government the entire european union community to enforce sanctions on zimbabwe luta continua we went through this with mugabe we went through this with Tsongirai. we are going to go through this again with chamisa the question is who is the enemy of the progress of the people is it the foreign countries that are imposing sanctions on us or it is our own brothers and sisters who are actually sellouts of the west who are going behind our backs and seeking for favors in foreign countries that further push our economies into the doldrums of economic quandrums. Now, if you understand that, it will be easy for you to begin to interpret that African politics is not African politics. African politics is international politics. I'll make it simpler for the younger viewers. There is no politics in Africa. The politics of Africa is what I call resource and resource politics. Resource and resource politics. What do you have in your country? We have coffee. Beautiful. Who are the best and the biggest consumers of coffee in the world? Europe. So, where does the coffee come from? Burundi, Kenya. Where does the tea come from? Malawi, Zimbabwe, Tanganda. How do we keep our kettles of coffee boiling in Europe? How do we manage the price of coffee? Take note, the politics of Africa is determined from the kitchens of Europe because people want their coffee and their sugar in that coffee. Then you design policies and politics that manage the production houses of those coffees. Come to gold. Britain is the biggest seller of gold. They don't even have one small little quarry site where they get the gold from so what do you do you identify countries in the world that are manufacturing and producing gold you go there and put your political economic systems into those countries and manage the politics of those countries so that you can get as much resources out of those countries into your own coffers when your coffers are full of resources then you can begin to determine the prices and manage the politics of those countries so we find actually ultimately in Africa, we are not dealing with politicians. We are not dealing with leaders. We are dealing with puppet governments of the West. Underline that statement. Puppet governments of the West. When you run your elections, you run your votes, and the Western world says, we are happy, we are happy, we are happy. You must ask yourself the question, why are they happy if there is nothing that is in it for them? Then you understand. But the whole issue of Africans ruling themselves, it's not an ideal which the Western world views with good eyes. Because if Africans are able to rule themselves, if Africans are able to manage their resources, if Africans are able to drive the future of their own countries and the economies of their own countries, then the Western world would find itself trapped into a quagmire of chaos. So how do we manage this? Make sure that whichever government gets into power, 
that government is friendly that government is apologetic that government is user friendly that government has treaties that government is managed that government is puppet that government is actually a surrogate child of the western economies so we now under fully understand as africans those of us who are reading and are wide awake we now fully understand that our education is managed so that we understand them our history is altered so that we glorify them our economy is managed so that they benefit from it our science is managed so that we buy the resources from them our engineering is managed so that we resource manufacturing issues and standards from them our culture is managed so that we are so we socialize our children or ourselves according to their cultures and when we are socializing that culture we are able to buy resources in that culture look at us we dress up like europeans want some rings and want some phones and everything else that is all european why because we've been taught that these are the resources of the educated my question is simple in as much as these resources are good for us and they are available to us and we buy them with our own money so we own them but are you telling me that we would sell our countries for a plate of food and a plate of soup that's where me and politicians have crossed our paths I am still looking for politicians in the country who fully understand the magnitude of the African culture and its people. Respect that culture. Honor that culture. Discipline yourself to develop that culture. Preserve that culture. And then interpret economies, politics, engineering, science, fashion, music, art medicine from that perspective because constantly we seem to be borrowing things into our system and they are not taking anything from our system except our resources and we are selling our souls to the west for the economies and fashions that destroy our own homes and our own cultures so let's share some basic common sense. Let's share some basic common sense so that even the young children can understand us. Education. Who wants us to be educated? We are educated to become what? Who writes the education? What is the content of the education? What are the benefits to the educator? And the educated does the educated become himself or does the educated become like the one who is educating him is this education about self or is this is education about the other is this education bringing me back to my community to help my community or this education gives me access to move away into europe into america and become a citizen there education translates itself into lifestyle of those that have gone into education once a man is educated all of a sudden he looks at his mother and his mother becomes foreign to him looks at his father and the father is no longer educated looks into his community and the community is full of imbeciles and fools looks around him and these people are all uncivilized. Why? Because he or she is educated, proliferated in Massachusetts University, Harvard University, Oxford University, Cambridge University. Now, when you, when you are educated in the West and you become irrelevant in Africa, do you think that you are educated? Something must be wrong in your head when your education makes it impossible for you to relate to your own mother. Now, I look around. I'm coming from the pastoral background. Pardon me, but no need for apologies. We're all growing under these systems. It's only now that my beard is getting gray and I'm beginning to ask things. 
You go to college, you train to become a minister, you train to become a pastor, you're given a new district out there, a theologian, you're holding under your armpit, a nice little theology diploma or a theology degree, and then in your midst of starting to work, you, a whole Ndebele person, or Zulu, or Tosa, or Pedi, or Lemba, or Lozi, or Tonga men, you are given a district in Mlivisi, in the midst of the Tonga region. You are given a district in Shandima, in Venda, and you are a Venda boy. You get to Venda. All of a sudden, you can't speak in Venda. I also did you come back to Venda now. I also go to the Chikaranga. I was like, what? No, Kuluma isn't the bad. I was like, you are now educated. All the theories of education are Western. So when you get to the local church, you ask for a translator who can help you to translate theologies theories, Greek mythologies, Eastern mythologies, Gregorian mythologies, Aristotle's, Catholic theologies, Reformation theologies, Ellen G. White's, Joseph Smith and Bates. You sit around the old people and they look at you, wondering this pastor who has become so educated and disappeared into the clouds. When is he going to come back and talk to us down here? I want to ask you a question. Are you educated for us as the common people? Or you are educated for them? Another interesting Tory story that I had. Another young man was sent to go and do pastoring in a district. When he gets there, then he says, But there's no piano in the church. Can you believe it? Because he went to Helderberg, where there was a piano in the church. All of a sudden, when he comes to a local church, he's looking for a piano. Take note, this is not only on the religious circle. Take it into the economic circle. You go and you study your degrees in Harvard, in Oxford, in Washington, D.C., Boston University. When you come back, is it not possible? Is it not true? That now you want the local people to behave like the world where you are coming from, which you deem to be astute, elite, professional, and civilized. So I want to recommend something to you that will shock you. That our academicians are the best rapists in the world. Yes, you heard me well. They are rapists. They come into our local communities here and they rape us with their education. They force themselves on us with their education. They force their diet on us with their education. They force their medicine on us with their education. They force their politics on us with their education. They force their music on us is their age they force the western cultures on us because we who remained behind in africa are not educated are not civilized and they are coming back to us and some of them all of a sudden because they were saying you know nazis of america now they can no longer speak normal english they must start training their like their tongues and you know what i'm talking about you know what i mean you know what i mean all that rubbish of tongue twisting and etc you know I me mean? you know I me mean? I lived in London for crying out loud for five years or so. Do you hear any diction of a Briton or British in terms of my diction? Why is it that when you go to them, you come back sounding like them, and then you force all of us here to behave like them? The other day I got myself caught up in an argument with another man, another white guy, who, you know, I have friends across the, the road and everywhere. So this guy walks up and says, Hey, Mugabe, Mugabe, he's a, he's a traitor. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an oppressor. He's a dictator. You know, big words, you know. And I looked at the man and said, Hey, man, you better tell that to somebody else who does not know you guys. Me, I can see you as an open glass. Now, Mugabe, Mugabe is not black. Mugabe is not African. Mugabe is a white man. 
What do you mean? Gabi, Gabi is black. He said, no. You're going to listen to me also because I listened to you ranting about what Mugabe has done. Let me tell you who Mugabe is. Mugabe is a white man. How do you say that? Have you ever seen Mugabe dressed up in traditional clothes? No. He's always there, even in his old age, waiting to exhale. Still putting on a white man's tie and a jacket doing an interview. Not only dressing. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever wondered why you as the Western world, you gave him doctorates from Cambridge, doctorates from Oxford, doctorates from Indiana, doctorates, 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 doctorates 40, 50, don't know how many degrees and doctorates the man has received. And after giving him all these accolades, of academic he taught him his lifestyle how to eat how to drink above all how to think when Mugabe does what he does why do you now relegate him and say he's an African when he's thoroughly a product of your own thinking as the Western world education 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 is evil as long as it does not teach you about yourself but teaches you about the other how come we know about William Shakespeare we don't know we don't know about Mbuya Nehanda we don't know about the kings of the Lozi tribes we don't know about the leaders of Mau Mau we don't know about ourselves who are the Njovus why are they called Njovus who are the Nubes why are they called Nubes who are the Nguenas the Mukwenas why are we called the Mukwenas who are the Hungues the birds why are we called the Hungues after we come back from school Educated as we are, proliferated, two, three degrees under our armpits, with graduation regalias and four squared heads on our heads, trying to celebrate what we have achieved. The question is, do you know yourself, or now you know more about other people? This is where I have it, that education, education, which translates itself into technology, translates itself into literature, translates itself into entertainment, translates itself into technology, translates itself into culture, into behavior, until it becomes forced behavior. That now, you cannot go and go for an interview looking like that, because the professional world does not accept it. Now, you cannot talk like that, because a civilized man does not talk like that. Now, you cannot drink that in Biza to clean up your stomach. Because an educated man does not drink imbiza. He drinks a laxative. But tell me if an imbiza makes you blow on your backside and a laxative makes you blow on the backside, what is the difference? What is the difference? Has white medicine become superior to black medicine? Has black education become superior to white education? Or white education has become superior to black education? Has white clothes become superior to black clothing? Has white language become superior to has white people become superior to black people? Now we bleach, bleach ourselves. You find the hands and etc. The ankles are refusing to bleach. You can only see other parts. Faces are bleached. What are we saying? Are we saying that when we run away from ourselves, we become better people? Or when we embrace ourselves, we become better people? I got a calling for all African people. But be careful that when we learn, when we go to school, we don't learn so that we become like them. We learn the system so that we can take the information of the system and adapt it into our own environments. Why? So that we can find the relevance, relevance, relevance of that information. But up to so far, what I tend to see is that every time some of us become slightly educated, we cannot take off our jackets, we cannot take off our ties, we can't take off our glasses. We can't take off our shoes and socks. We can no longer go to the rural areas. 
We can no longer sleep on the floor. We can no longer milk our cows. We can no longer eat pap with igusha or peanut butter. We can no longer drink mahew. The things we grew up on. Because now, we want it in a can. Yes, it must be in a can. With some ice, please. Now, we want salad with olive. Some salad dressing, Greek dressing, please, with some gherkins and some feta cheese. Wow, wow, you stupid black person. You even acquire tastes. Now, the olives are bad. You must acquire the taste. This is, you must acquire the taste. So, you struggle to acquire the taste so that you can look astute. Polished, professional, academic, personally, I grew up in Bikita, Nashingo, rural areas, heading cattle. First line of English that I could speak professionally without being embarrassed, I was doing my grade, my form two. We used to drink water in the river. You go on the side of the river, you scoop some sand there, you pull out the water. In some cases, you put some leaves in there to, 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 to like clean up the water. After you've done that, then you drink the water with all the germs. Name it. Someone is bathing a few meters up the river. Kettles are peeing in the river and etc. You go on the sand and you clean up there and you drink from there. I am coming from there. I'm not embarrassed. You leave home in the morning with nothing in your hand except a small little pouch. When you're heading your kettle there, you get a cow, put some milk in a thing there, hit some baobab tree, collect your fruit, mix it with some milk, eat yourself some yogurt for the day, eat some wild fruits and etc. Had you seen me in the 70s when I was heading cattle, you'd have never thought that I could speak English the way I'm speaking it now. Hence, I'm not embarrassed even if I break the English. So what? Get a life for yourself. There are other languages I can speak without even breaking a, a vowel or a predicate or a prefix or a suffix. I know where I'm coming from. Now when I look at my people right now and we all of a sudden have been captured, fully captured, economically captured, artistically captured, religiously captured, politically captured, artistically captured. Fashionically, fashionically captured. You can hashtag me for that word. I think I'm the first one to use it. Fashionically captured. And in the midst of this entire capture, the African child is slowly migrating towards the West. I want to ask you a question. At the rate at which we are going right now, will we have Africans? On the continent we will have black people in complexion but the software in our heads will be fully corrupted as white people what's a shame to many of us is that we think that the more Western we look the more acceptable we become so we constantly pushing ourselves refusing to be black and slowly and trying to become acceptable trying to look like them trying to speak like them trying to work like them no i'm the only black person in that school i'm the only black person in that neighborhood i'm the, I'm the only black person in that function only black person for crying out loud who cares if you're the only black person does it make you feel better that you're the only black person in a white environment is that value does that make you valuable that you're the only black person and I, I shudder to look at us I shudder to look at us as Africans who don't find pride in ourselves we insult our own grandfathers we insult our own mothers and fathers and I'm frank my own mother my own mother cannot speak English and dare you touch that woman I'll kill you that's my mother 
she sacrificed all that she had she would sit on the marketplace there and sell vegetables sell mangoes sell bananas sell eggs sell vegetables so that i could go to school i am what i am today because of that old lady i will be stupid when i go back to my mother hey mommy you know that uh, in the dispensation of the educated we have been proliferated to admit that uh, education and self-advancement are uh, the issues of personal aggrandizement and what 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 the hell what the hell would i be talking about will my astute prolific language make me a better child the answer is no what therefore are we talking about i want you to start thinking as an african child do not refuse what you were taught it's good that's why you are here you're able to use a cell phone so that you can learn but put that education into use ask yourself the question i now know this beautiful as a quadratic equation mathematician then ask yourself on the left what are other things that i have left behind that I need to bring to the table so that my understanding of this knowledge and my knowledge of where I'm coming from, I can marry the two and I can always choose which one do I want to live with. For argument's sake, education does not make us morally upright. It makes us academically intelligent, morally and culturally stupid. You want to ask me why? Go to prison. You will find that 90% of all those people in prison went to school and they're in jail. Why? Because morality, ethics, and education are not in the same WhatsApp group. You are taught to read and write and you become an educated thief. At the end of the day, you think that when you have a checkbook in your hands, you can sign up anything. You sign up money for yourself. Where do you end up? Arrested. So we, we, I'm not saying let's go back. No, you miss me. You miss me. I'm not saying let's go back. We already have this one in our hands. We've already worked for it. It's here. You're holding it in your hands. But what you do with this education, put it as a foundation. Take another rock, put it again. Take another rock, put it on top again. Until you fully can build the estate of your building, the estate of your knowledge, founded on constructive knowledge, understanding your past, relevant in the present and starting to build and forging a new future where we are going with our children i sit here often and marvel to myself what is going to happen to the african child where are we where are we coming from and where are we going as a people are we happy with the direction in which we are going is this what we want to become they tell us you must be democratic as a nation. Question, is it what we want or it is what they want? They tell us, your economy is not doing well. Question, is it our economy or it is your economy? They tell us, your stock exchange is going up and down. Question, is it our stock exchange or it's your stock exchange? They tell us, the fashion must be like this, like this. Question, is it our fashion or it is your fashion they tell us the food that is in the shops is not healthy food question is it our food or it is your food they tell us the education system is going down the education system is going down question is it our education or it is your education they tell us the politics in this place it is not good politics with lots of anarchy and lots of dictators question is it our politics or it is your politics at the end of the day when you start questioning these things you may actually discover that we are a bunch of fools we have been left with an empty pot and we've been told that there's lots of food in the pot and all of us for fearing the white men we are scared of opening the pot only to discover that it's an empty pot waiting for nothing spending our lives in meaninglessness of maintaining western culture western ideologies western theories western religion western economies western fashion western entertainment western values 
at the destruction of our own. That's the cost of being educated. That's what it means to be educated. Put on a tie, put on a jacket, matching shoes and belt. Cell phone on one hand, briefcase on the other. Go and work for the white man. Get a salary, a 13th check if you're lucky, medical aid, cell phone allowance, car allowance, and housing subsidy. Eight to five. When you retire, we give you a watch and a placard. 40 years of service. In the olden days, they used to give us bicycles. I don't know what they're giving these days for your retirement. It was nice doing business with you. The only time you're financially viable, when you're 50, 60 years old, most likely by then you're finished paying out for your house and you cannot take any more risks in terms of doing business. You're waiting to die. Why is it easy to walk to the bank right now and get 1.4 million rand to buy a car? But you can't get 1.4 million to buy a house. And you can pay out for your car in less than five years. The car is paid out for. But it will take you 25 years to pay for a house. Think. Think. Think, African child. Why? Because once you have a house in your name, you can benefit that house into financial resources, unlock finances, which you can invest in. You can use a house to buy another house, to buy another house, and invest the money. But a car is perishable. By the time you're finishing paying for that car, for 1.4 million, the car is worth less than 200,000. And by the way, next time you go to the bank, and they're saying they're going to give you a loan, they must not send the loan to the car dealer or send the loan to the house agent. Ask them, say, can I have that money in my account, as cash in my account? See how the bank manager will get freaked out. But remember, if they are giving you a loan, it's your loan. You are going to pay for that loan. So why can't they give you your money? Because you are going to pay for it. You have signed here that I'm going to pay this money in 25 years. My salary slips are here that I will be able to pay for the money. Why can't you give me the money in my hands? No. They, they know their story. The money is from the bank to the other person. You remain paying the debts. And we don't want to see you at all. Because a black man should never put his hands on money. Look around the world today. 80 to 90% of all the black people who have loans and loans in the bank they never held that money in their hands you sign on a piece of paper you are told that it is approved but after it is approved never think that you will see or touch that money you can go to the car dealer we will move the money to the car dealer you can go to the house agent we will move the money there you can go there we will move the money there but you as a black person must never be allowed to touch that money with your own hands. Because if you can touch that money with your own hands, you may make a decision that out of the 1.4 million of buying a Range Rover HSC, maybe I need a car for 35,000. I can use, therefore, the 1.3 million and start a business for myself. Buy some cows, buy houses, invest in some sort of business. Will black people not be far by now if we had access to funding, not loans and debt, but funding that we can reinvest into the issues, into the areas of our own concerns. But anyway, sometimes people have written to me and have shouted at me that I sound like a gonging symbol in the midst of nowhere, making noise. The stuff that I talk about does not make sense. I'm too much backwards. 
the things that I'm talking about don't make sense to local people. I'm, uh, I live in the 18th century. I got a comment like that the other day, and I must wake up and smell the coffee. The life is progressing and things are moving on. Stop reminding us of where we're coming from. I fully agree and I fully admit. Please use this material as manure. Plan your life on it. Plan your ideas on it. And start to see how you can begin to evoke your life into a space of function, growth, maturity, and financial stability. Your afternoon driver, he is Maponga J. Tomorrow afternoon sometime at 4.15, you find me here. Sometimes I'm here, sometimes I'm not. Forgive me, guys. Life is a bit difficult also. I'm battling and uh, juggling around my investments here to make it happen. But if some of you guys are attached to radio, media, and other spaces, please link us up. I think it's high time we take this thing further. I think we can even take this thing up and uh, begin to have African programs for African people, for the African child, begin to develop our areas of thought and etc. Until we meet again tomorrow afternoon, same time, Maponga J, driver here, we're discussing African politics, African science, medicine, art, and everything else between. Don't go away, hang around, and the best thing you can do for me for today is to, after you've watched this video, just share, 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 share. Just tag the share button so that we can let the message go wild, wild, so that every African child can begin to think. Maybe you could help someone in the midst of this financial crisis and this economic problems, political issues.